Um, you know what? It's, it, I don't know. I'm kind of going back to that era with my hair, long hair. <laughs> I'll pull my teeth out in a second. Uh, um, but you know, when I was in Birmingham, you know what? I uh, kind of the same thing. You're down south, uh, um, non-traditional market. You want people want to see scrapping and fighting that rough and tumble hockey game. And uh, the very first exhibition I was in Birmingham. I grabbed some university kid, college kid that probably never fought in his life, and I kind of one punched him and knocked him out. <laughs> Stay out of my yard was born right there, and then uh, you know when we came to came to uh, Columbus, um, Charlie, you know, Charlie was paying me, and I'm like, you can call me whatever you want <laughs> as long as I get a paycheck, and you know, boom, boom, kind of stuck with uh, with me, and uh, you know, to the to this day, I still walk around town and. A lot of people don't even know my first name is Jerome, and uh, I, I respond to Boom Boom fine. It is, um, you know, it, it 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 relates to a lot of kind of the sports here as well. I mean, um, we grew up on the farm, small town. When I say small town, I'm talking less than 150 people. Um, we were about eight miles out of the, out of town. Um, you know, so there wasn't, uh, we got to a point where my brother and I, I have a twin brother, my brother and I played uh, in this small town and there's only 12 players on your hockey team. Um, and we were fairly good. All of a sudden, we outgrow that small town. We got to go someplace for competition so we can get better. Um, you want it, you put all the time and effort to hopefully, so they can use that to make a better life for them, whether it's going to school or college or make it pro or all that stuff. My parents did that for us and, and you know what, the, the very small percentage actually make it. But I think the sports and, and being involved in it, it just teaches you life lessons. It teaches you a work ethic, how to get along with people and, and, and different situations. I mean, I, I wouldn't, I, I'm so thankful that my parents got us involved in something. It turned out great for me. I and uh, but it, I mean it, it. It made me who I am and 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 taught me a whole lot of things uh, along the way. Charlie, Charlie, Phil Roberto, and Bruce uh, Garber. Bruce Garber. I mean, uh, they all. Uh, Charlie and Phil especially. I mean, um, they marketed me fairly well. You you saw me. You thought Cottonmouth. Cottonmouth. You thought of me. Um, and it, it, it is still like that a little bit today, but I, I want to be that, but I, I want, I need somebody to step up on my hockey team to be that guy. I need to, I need to be able to market that person and, and, uh, and, and keep him here for a while. You know what, I was pretty realistic with my abilities and where I was at my life and, and abilities basically. Um, I knew I'd already had the opportunity to be in the American League, three NHL uh, camps. I knew I was never making the NHL, um, so kind of switch focus to, you know, what do I need to do? You know, I'd much rather, I'd much rather find a home, and and stay in that place, organization, city, and make a name for myself than be on 10 different teams in 10 different cities and just travel around and be a nomad in the minor hockey league kind of world. Um, and this is something I try to tell my guys. You can be something unique and big in this city and get to know people and make a name for yourself and it might be the most important part of your life and people that you meet because you're Columbus Cottonmouth and, and you're an athlete. I would say the travel. I mean, obviously, every athlete has to travel. You know, you play home and away games, um, but probably, probably the travel. I mean, we don't get to <laughs> fly planes and sit in first class. I, I, I listen to the NHL and watch the NHL, and, and they gripe that they have to play back-to-back -back games on the Friday Saturday. I'd like to see them play back-to-back. -back Back to back, <laughs> playing four games in four nights. If you were to talk to a true enforcer, I mean, I, I don't consider myself a true enforcer. I mean, I would protect my guys, and I would, I would, uh, I would, I would draw attention towards me, so my team, my 
the better players could go score and all that stuff. And, and so, uh, I'm, believe me, I would come off the top rope if somebody looked at... Tom my, Wilson was enforcer. Right? Tom Wilson was enforcer. Okay. So, um, I would consider myself more as a high energy... <laughs> um, I don't even want to call it, call myself that, but uh, anyways, I, you know, I did fight um, it, in that role. If I fought a big guy, a six foot four, six foot five guy, and I did well, I'm a hero. If I fight a six foot four, six foot five guy and I lose, I'm supposed to lose. I'm in a win-win situation, in my opinion. So it's part of the game. It's part of the game, and you, you know what? And I I tell this to any of the kids that I go talk to at school. You know what? It, Fighting is in hockey for a couple of reasons. One, change momentum of the game. There are no, there shouldn't, there shouldn't be fights just to be fights. Two, uh, protecting your players, making them feel safe. You know, as a enforcer or a guy that's supposed to make intimidate my players, my best players, my goal scorers. A lot of times, goal scorers are scared, and you know they got to feel safe uh, to produce. That was my job to make those guys feel safe. Uh, sometimes if you're being bullied, sometimes if you push back, they'll stop bullying you. And, and uh, you know what, so if you are a, if you are a, a, uh, a goal scorer, just, you know what, stick up for yourself every now and then, they'll probably leave you alone a little bit. So that's the three reasons why fighting is in hockey. So what's the message you tell kids when you deliver this? Um, uh, I tell them that, and you know what, um, and then, then I preface this, and this is God's honest truth. I've never been in a fight off the ice, ever. I mean, there's no reason for it. I mean, on the ice, that's my job, to protect my guys, to make us win, to uh, entertain. We are in the entertainment business, and that's what people in the South want to see. Uh, and you know what, over, this is going on to be 19 years here, and, and you're starting to see and talk to people where, you know what, nah, fighting's not that important. The average, the average hockey fan, you know, everyone likes to see it here and there, but I mean, uh, it's the one-timers that come here, they like to see the, the scrapping and the physical play. But the, now after 20 years, we do have some hockey purists in Columbus that they just enjoy a good, fast, up and down, uh, hard hitting uh, hockey game. They don't need nope. to see a fight. Tell you what, when I put my skates on and flip a switch, it, it just, I don't know, something changes, something, <laughs> something changes in me. I, I mean, um, I don't know, I guess uh, what I do on the ice, I do that so my team can win. I would run through that brick wall for a win. And, and I, it doesn't matter what happens to this <laughs> whole body, it's just a win is a win. And, and just, to, just to feel that, it, I, I don't know, there's no other feeling like that. So I don't know what happens, but I mean, it just changes. The win is a different. Is different now. It, you know, obviously we went on the ice, means success for the organization, or it translate it translate into a little bit more success to, for the organization. Um, wins creates more fans. Fans creates more people in the building. Creates a better bottom line. Now we're here. We can do our job. And m my job in Columbus, it all kind of rolls into one. But at the end of the day. If we win a championship at the end of the year, that's all bonus and gravy. Um, we're here, in, to me, I, and I truly believe this, we're here in Columbus to, to provide something for this community um, to come to as a nice family-friendly place to bring your kids, to enjoy yourself, watch a hockey game. There's so much stuff going on here. Um, athletes today don't take themselves or aren't as serious about who they are and what they portray to community. We're role models. I'm a role model. I haven't played, been on the ice in, in 11 years, but I'm a role model. I, I mean, the kids that watch me and, and see me, my kids, I mean, I, we're all role models and, and athletes even more so because we're put up on a pedestal, which I mean, you are who you are who you are and you got to send the right message because you know what you you can make a difference in somebody's life by how you hold yourself what you what you put out there as and and how you act and you can you can influence somebody um, just make somebody feel good 
that's all everybody wants is, is to feel special. I mean, um, and uh, I hope I, I hope I do that. I made one last call to Charlie, and Charlie's like, "Yes, yes, you can, you, you can, uh, let's let's do this." Um, and knowing that Charlie had the red sticks at the time, some of the stuff, uh, you know, I had to, we had to go to ball games and and uh, sign autographs, sitting dunking booths <laughs> at the red sticks, uh, which uh, again all kind of led into, you know, what I'm going to do whatever it takes for this organization to be here. That's part of my job. My job is. Um, is to promote our hockey team, and uh, you know Charlie was just a, a, a great, cool guy that loved to um, promote. I mean, he did a lot for this community. Um, unfortunately, everything was so short-lived uh, here. Um, you know, we came in '96, '97, and he passed away '97, '98. You, you know what? We all knew Charlie was still watching us. And I think it, it really, it really impacted our hockey team knowing that he put this group together. And um, I think he knew his time was going to be short-lived, and he wanted to, he wanted to see us win. He wanted a championship, and y'all won, and, and we wanted that year. Um, a month and a half too late, um, but I know I know uh, Martha flew out to Wichita when we won it, and. Uh, she was on the ice with us, uh, holding the cup, and, and we all knew that he was there. He was watching us. So. You know what, Juan and Shelby uh, are just—they're really good stewards of the community. I mean, uh, uh, totally different from from Charlie. I mean, uh, Charlie is was an extrovert, all over all over town. Civic clubs. Civic clubs, this and that. Um, Juan and Shelby, introverts. Great folks, but they keep themselves. Uh, they do a lot for the community, but do it quietly. I feel fortunate to to be involved with them and and, uh, and be a part of their family because they treat they treat us like family. There's not a whole lot of people in town that would uh, that would keep a hockey team and probably not make a whole lot of money doing it. Yeah, I knew I knew uh, along I knew al along the way that I had this uh, my aortic uh, stenosis, and uh, we followed it um, from Birmingham actually. Um, is so you had heart issues that you knew. Well, I, di I didn't really know how serious <laughs> the heart issues were. Really, <laughs> I mean, um, backing up, I went to my uh, second NHL camp in LA, and. Uh, did a physical doctor say hey, you got a heart murmur okay well let's go check it out went went and checked it out yeah you're fine that's all that's all I heard um, when I came to Columbus uh, dr. Macheski is my cardiologist uh, with Columbus cardiology and um, no nope, let's just keep up keep on it um, retired and uh, <laughs> the year I retired dr. Macheski is Thank God you retired. I was, uh, you know what? I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you retired because uh, the story was I went to get my hernia fixed, <laughs> and and my wife's in the, a nurse, and she's like, well, you know, you're gonna have to go see Dr. Macheski and make sure you can get cleared so you can get put to sleep. And um, sure enough, made a call, and he's like, no, you need to come in and let's have a check. And I did a, a stress test and. EKG and he's like, yeah, no, we're not going to let you do that surgery. <laughs> we're not going to put you to sleep for a hernia. We, we need to concentrate on this valve that uh, that you have. And uh, um, so from that point, I knew it was getting close to having surgery and uh, better to have it while I was still healthy. Changed my perspective on life. You know what, uh, I'm going into the hospital, you know, knowing that, you know, in good hands and this and that, but, uh, um, I was ready one way or the other. Uh, God, uh, God was fortunate that uh, it wasn't my time, and uh, He blessed uh, me and the doctors to take good care of me and all that stuff, and it worked out great. But at the same time, I was I was ready. Oh um, boy, it's probably five or six. So you've been skating for forty years. Almost. Forty years, and still not very good at it. <laughs> <laughs> I made a living at uh, I made a living at being a very bad skater, um, uh, you know. And, and I, 
when I do talk to kids. I mean, it, 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 when I do go to the schools, it is a good, it is a, it's a very good message. I mean, I'm an average, I'm just average at everything I did. And what made me better than everybody is what I put into it, that fearless, the, the intangibles that come to the game. And whether you're a football, baseball, hockey player, you can't make up for intangible. You can have all you can have all the talent in the world, and if you don't put everything you have into it, I think I'm calmer. I think uh, uh, again, you know, the beard is a little grayer, which it's not on here because it's gray. Um, I think that comes with uh, that comes with just learning and life experiences. Uh, um, you know, starting going to NHL camps and realizing what it took to get there, and then. What it takes to stay there, and knowing that I had the internal part, the desire, and the work ethic to stay there, but knowing that I didn't, and being smart enough and being realistic enough, and who I am and my abilities, knowing that I didn't have the God-gifted talents to stay there, but knowing that, that you know, okay, I'm not in the NHL. No big deal. I can still have an impact on, on others' lives and, and and really that's what it's all about for me now is, is that my I if I have my office staff, I have my eighteen guys in my locker room and then, you know, everybody around us there if my job is to make those guys better people.